Hello. Welcome to my review of uh, Wreck-It Ralph. This is going to be the same as my Hobbit review in that I'm not actually going to, you know, um, include any footage of the uh, film, obviously, because it's still in cinemas. Um, I'm not going to use any footage from the trailer either. Chances are you know what Wreck-It Ralph is. If you don't, then, well, it's kind of weird that you're watching this, but still. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do... Um, what I did in my last film review, but a bit more advanced in that I'm going to give in sort two reviews. I'm going to give one for those who haven't seen it and don't want to be spoiled and one for those who do, but I'm going to do it in a different way this time. I'm going to put up here the caption of the time that I want you to skip ahead to in the video if you don't want anything spoiled because that will just skip you to near the end where I give a summary of the um, film itself. Right. Chances are if you've stayed, you don't mind being spoilt or you've already seen the film. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to start off. The very the very general premise is Wreck-It Ralph um, is the bad guy in an arcade game called Fix-It Felix Jr. Um, in which, essentially, the game is a... is Disney's interpretation of the game Rampage, where, like, you climb up the side of the buildings and monsters and stuff. Um, I thought that was quite a nice nod, really, because it kind of... It combined Rampage with Donkey Kong, because instead of just destroying things, he was the bad guy, and you had to, like, fix stuff and, like, climb up to the top, so that was pretty cool. Um, so basically, yeah, he's in that game, and basically he's unhappy with his life, because for about 30 years he's been doing the same thing. And the idea is that when, an, when a game is turned on, the data inside sort of essentially a sentient, so like a year of playing Wreck-It Ralph will mean that uh, no, Fix-It Felix Jr. will mean that basically the characters in the game will have lived a year of their life doing the same job. It, in a way, I thought it was sort of like the video game equivalent to Toy Story, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, he gets really bored with it um, and then realises that on the 30th anniversary, Fixed Felix and the other characters in the game are all holding a party in the apartment building that he destroys um, in the game. But obviously, uh, Wreck-It Ralph doesn't live with them. He lives in a dump outside. So basically, he's really sad that he didn't get invited to the party. And then basically he's told, well, you're never going to win a medal. A medal is... It was never properly explained. I think a medal is what you get when you complete the game or do really well in the game, which is a bit weird because arcade games don't do that. Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Centipede, all those games don't actually have an end. They just roll over for harder difficulty. So that was a bit of a weak point there. It did kind of feel like Disney was just doing what the media do a lot with games like Grand Theft Auto where they're just like, you win points! And it's like, you don't actually win points. But anyway, um, so he wants one of these medals, which I'm assuming Fixed Felix has, but never shows off, which is weird. But anyway, so he goes out to try and prove himself. So another aspect of the arcade is not only are they alive, but they travel through the electrical cables that plug in their arcade machine to like a big like train hub place where they can connect to other games. And so basically, like... Um, is at the start that he goes to Pac-Man's um, stage thing to have, like, the meeting of the bad guys, which I absolutely fucking loved, because it had Zangief, M. Bison, Bowser, um, I think there were a few others as well, but that, that was brilliant, that was a brilliant start to it, because it kind of showed his integration into, you know, the actual characters in arcades. Anyway, so basically... He goes and talks to them about wanting to do this, and they all tell him, no, 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 you can't do that. Um, and they use the term turbo, which is interesting, because it. I thought it was a reference, because M. Bison to, uh, said that to wreck -It Ralph, I thought it was actually a reference to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which is when you could play as M. Bison, but it turned out it was actually a reference to another made-up arcade character. So basically... His plan is to get a medal, they tell him no, he tries anyway by entering a game called Hero's Duty, which I thought was interesting because it was a combination, well, obviously the title, Call of Duty, all the like marines and stuff were Call of Duty-esque. Then the main female character in it reminded me a lot of Sam Samus Aran from the Metroid universe. 
because she was battling evil alien bugs and stuff. Um, but also some people have said that it's a lot like Halo and the whole armor and, and weapons they use, which makes sense. So that was kind of the Disney's take on what an FPS is, but sort of an on royal shooter rather than the arcade. And then, so he gets a medal from that, then he's chased, uh, no, then he escapes into another game called Candyland? Candyland Races, possibly. Basically, it's sort of Mario Kart, but it's sweet themed. Um, that's where the chunk of the um, movie actually takes place, which is a bit weird, I found, but it works. So basically, he loses this medal. He meets the girl who's voiced by Sarah Silverman, who I'm not going to lie, I didn't like Silverman as a performance very well. I mean, I realise that she has a very croaky voice and stuff, and she's trying to play hyperactive little kid. But I just found the kid's voice to be really annoying halfway through, and by the end it was just like, I realise you may have an interesting story, but ah, uh, that voice. Anyway, so he finds her, and she's this like glitch character, and apparently, um, there is actually a really interesting plot point to that, because she's a glitched character in an arcade game, um, but apparently if she was ever allowed to become a real racer in the game, then the game itself would be sort of reported and then shut down. So that would mean all the characters would escape from the game through the electrical cables, but she would stay behind because she's a glitch and can't get out or something. That was an interesting plot point, but it wasn't great. Also, another point that... Uh, well, another point of the film which I was quite impressed with was um, Qbert's appearance, because Qbert, you may be aware, it was... I think it was the 80s, was in the game the same name, Qbert. Um But he had a very, like, minor role, but it was more of a important role than a lot of other characters, rather than, like, Zangi Forever, who, like, appeared for two minutes. He actually appeared, like, back and forth throughout the film as, like, a real, you know, like, concrete character, not just some cameo. Um, but, yeah, the plot itself was... It, it was interesting, because... It started out with Disney kind of going like, hey, look, we're relevant to games and mentioning games. And then they tried to, like, develop, well, introduce the, like, idea of two or three of their own games as being just as, like, historically important as the other ones. Which, I don't know, it, it did come off, as a huge fan of games myself, as just Disney kind of trying to be like, hey, we get retro arcade games. What if we made some? And, like, some of them... Well, of the two, actually, they introduced Heroes Duty um, and Candyland Racing, that they're both fairly new ideas, as in, like, late 90s things. So it, it was kind of felt weird for them to be hanging out with, like, the ghost from Pac-Man and stuff, because it was like... Actually, no, well, wreck it, Ralph. That makes sense. On to gaming cameos. As I did briefly mention, there's, there's a lot of gaming cameos. Like, if you're a... F if you've been a fan of gaming for a while, or if, if you're aware of the history of gaming, then you're probably going to appreciate it, because a lot of, well, you see a lot of characters, that's that's a given, that's like, I think you see that on the poster. Um, there's a lot of, like, terminology, there's, like, glitches and stuff, and, and like, the um, players available in Candyland Racing, which is really interesting. I, I don't know, it, it, it came off as, like, Far more of a gaming, like, ref referential film than I ex Well, actually, no, it was as as I expected, really. It didn't go ultra deep um, on the gaming level, which I thought was good, because otherwise it's not going to get a very big general audience. Also, one gripe I did have is that the cameos... For the first 20 minutes or so, there was a lot, like... They'd casually mention, oh, Mario, he's late to the party. Maybe that's him at the door now, and stuff like that. But about 20 minutes in, it just tapered off. I think you saw Kilbert once or twice, but basically from then on, it was only the, like, agreed-upon game characters. And then, obviously, in the credit titles, then, they did use a lot of references, like wreck it -Ralph destroyed the car from the bonus stages, uh, Street Fighter 2, stuff like that. Um, as for, well, the humour, the humour's pretty good. I mean, there's one or two jokes that, like, I got that a lot of the audience didn't, being as most of the audience are made up of eight-year-old kids. Um, but again, it, the plot did, to me, come off 
a bit a sort of a bit too sort of sickly sweet near the end. It started out as you know a, an an adventure movie starring video game characters, but then near the end it sort of became weird in that Wreck It Ralph tried to prove that being a bad guy isn't a bad thing, but that it was just kind of weird that near the end he just became some kind of father figure and cared really, you know, loads about this girl. Um, yeah, oh, also another mention is the soundtrack, which I was really impressed with. Um, I think the there was an intro song that was pretty good, and then there was a part of, uh, there was a shot of Hero's Duty, which I've looked up, um, is a song made by Skrillex for the movie, I think, anyway. Um, and there are a few tracks, like, back and forth, like, they harken back a bit to 8-bit kind of era of music, but, like, modern, um, mixed in, and I intend buying the soundtrack, because that actually really impressed me. Um, apart from that, there's not much else to say. I will mention, though, I believe Sonic has been used in some promotional trailers. Either trailers or a poster. I remember something with Sonic appearing, and this is not the case. You see Sonic, at least to my knowledge, unless I like missed him in a very brief shot. You hear an announcement by Sonic's voice actor, and then very briefly see an interactive poster roll up in the game terminal place with Sonic on. And then at the very, very end of the... Um, as it like transitions into credits, you see someone running through a green hill zone and going through a, root, a loop. I, th I think that was wreck it that ran, though, and not Sonic. So... Technically, that was a bit disappointing because I really thought that, you know, being how, being, you know, thinking how important Sonic was, that he'd have had, maybe not a huge role, but maybe maybe he'd have helped out somewhere or wherever. Robotnik featured in it more than he did, although Robotnik didn't talk at all, which is a bit weird, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, right. So this is probably the point where you've come back. If you skipped ahead, because I well I've mentioned everything I can think of now. So basically, my overall summary is story. I'd give a seven out of ten. It started out really well. Went a bit downhill near the end. I thought um, voice acting was pretty good. I'd give her an eight. It was solid. Sarah Silverman's act. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, maybe a lot of people like her. But I felt that she gave a really annoying tint to a hyperactive small girl. Um, which, I guess it's hard not to avoid that trap, but still. Uh, the visuals were brilliant. They were really, really amazing. I Basically, I give a 10 to that. Like, Pixar always have amazing visuals. So, you know, that's to be expected. Soundtrack, I'd give her a 9, like... Uh, at a few scenes, the music is very, very generic with just some strings in the background, just playing a very small tune. Um, but yeah, okay, overall, I would give Wreck It Ralph an 8.5 out of 10. Um, if you're going to take a kid to watch it, then yeah, do that by all means. If you're going to watch it with a really, really critical like um, eye for gaming references, you're going to be mildly disappointed, because they're not throughout, but they're there enough to make it a specifically games-orientated film. Um, yeah, so 8.5 overall. I'd recommend going to see it in the cinema. Um, if you're not that into gaming, maybe I'd give her a 7.5, because it's going to lose a fair amount of references on you. Um, but yeah, okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.